extremely lucky that um, I play with two great clubs in Geelong, uh, St Mary's and, uh, and Geelong West. And uh, both those clubs gave me the opportunity of playing football at the best level that I could ever play at. And also gave me the opportunity of playing with some great guys and meeting some great friends both on and off the field. And the main thing was they both gave me the opportunity to play in premiership sides. Um, so that's what you play for. You play for, you know, to play the best you can, uh, to meet friends and to make friends both on and off the field and, and to win friendships. So not many people had that opportunity. So it was, uh, it was great to have uh, played with both those sides, especially here. Um, I didn't play a lot of junior football. I played basketball. So I started, uh, I think I played in, 1964 in the uh, St. Mary's Under-18, so it was the first year of football that really I played. And that was the first year I got involved with Geelong West because a good friend of mine, Jeff Hardeman, uh, played in that 64 side here. Um, and I remember going up to Turek Park with Jeff for the grand final. And Jeff played centre-half forward in that team. And I think he was one of the best in the round. Uh, and I won that game when Eric Nichols was coaching. I can remember standing at Turek Park thinking you know, how big these guys are and how hard this football was. And little did I think that four years' time I'd be playing the same side, same ground, you know, same day. So uh, that was my first sort of, I suppose, recollection of Geelong West. Um, then in '65, I, I went down to Geelong and played in the under 19s there, and also got promoted up to the seconds halfway through the year and played next to Brian Brush where I played in half-four flag. Uh, so it was my first experience of playing with, with Brushy. Um, and it was a great year uh, for me because I was a Geelong supporter and, and to, to play in the hoops and to play in the Big Park was just a great thrill. And that year we played um, three times on the MCG because the seconds made the uh, first semi preliminary in the grand final, so I was extremely lucky to, to, to play that year uh, and to get that success. We got beaten by Collingwood in the grand final. Uh, 66, the, the, the wheels fell off a bit and uh, I couldn't get a game with, uh, with the second, so I, I went back to St Mary's and uh, played there. They had a very good side, we were undefeated all year and got beaten by Geelong West Cricket Football Club. Uh, in the grand final, we were coached by Graham O'Donnell, uh, and uh, Graham's never let me forget that. Uh, he always reminds me of 66 for some reason, I'm not too sure why. <laughs> but uh, that was really disappointing just to play all year and be undefeated and then get beaten in the grand final. So it was a pretty pretty bad year, 66 for me. 67, I, I came over here with uh, Johnny Oliver, who um, was a good mate of mine and played some movies. And we both came over to try out, and uh, John made it, and unfortunately uh, I, I didn't make it that year. So I went back to St Mary's in '67, and uh, they had a guy called Glenn Bow who was uh, they recruited. And Glenn was sort of a bit of a footballing nomad. Um, he coached all around Victoria. Uh, was an excellent uh, football excellent coach. He coached most of the sides. He coached the uh, he won premierships in. Uh, and Glenn switched me from the half forward line to the half back, and that just changed my whole game. Um, it was a much easier position for me to play. Uh, playing some half forward, you need to be um, pretty strong and, and skillful, and I probably wasn't any of that. Uh, playing some half forward, you just have to play sort of straight down the, the field. Um, you, had to, uh, you could spring and, and, uh, and uh, lay off your, sit off your opponent. It was a lot easier. And, and it's in my game. So we had a good year that year and uh, we won the, uh, we ended up winning the premiership and we were champions that year. So I played that year with some areas and that uh, was just a terrific thrill of the uh, championship side. And we played St Peter's that, in that grand final and Terry Inglons was playing uh, for St Peter's and that was my first experience of, well I knew Terry from, from school but uh, we never knew each other very well and probably didn't particularly like each other on the ground very much. but. Uh, Obviously, the next year we became very much playing here. So, in '68, I again Johnny Oliver taught me to come back here to have another go, and um, they had a really good centre back called Ken Rayburn, 
had played in the uh, previous two years. And uh, Ken, he, I think he left because of work, but uh, he left the club and couldn't play. So that's an half back position was open. And uh, that allowed me to, uh, I suppose, uh, take take the opportunity of moving in the side as an half back. It was, it was, uh, it was a great, it was just a great year, 68. Uh, great bunch of guys. Um, and Brian Brushfield was our coach, and Brian was just a uh, fantastic people's person, both on and off the ground. He was a terrific guy. He, he molded us together as a great side. We, there was only probably Brian and, and uh, Ronnie Cannon that were outside of uh, the John Industry Club, so everyone that was in that side was either from St. Mary's, St. Peter's, North Geelong, East Geelong, North Shore, so it was a real um, Geelong combined side, so it was really the second side of Geelong, and that's probably why we got so many people uh, who used to come to the club, who used to come to the games on Sunday, because they came to, to, uh, to vote for their, um, their uh, Blokes they played with in the, in the local clubs. It was a great side. We uh, we didn't have any champions. Um, probably Darkie Harris was a standout, but the rest of us were all you know, pretty good footballers, but, but we were all pretty similar. Uh, so there were no egos, and I think that that helped us. There's nothing worse than having egos in football teams. Um, so we're all very even, uh, and as I said, Brushy was able to mould us into a really good side. I played centre back and I was extremely lucky because I had two of the hardest nuts playing beside me, John Snell and Eric Vanahey. Um, and I also had uh, John Oliver, who was a good mate of mine, playing at full back. And John was as hard as a cat's head as well. So uh, I, had, I was surrounded by, uh, by a pretty uh, strong, hard, tough, um, willing, talented footballers. I don't think any scenario forward in the VFA was too worried about me. I think I was more concerned about the blokes that were around me than me. Um, Darky played, Darky Harris played in the centre, and uh, he was without doubt the best uh, centre in, in the competition at that time, and probably the best before I ever played with. Um, and then we had a forward line, Brushy played us in our forward, and we had a very mobile forward line there Robbie Adams, Terry Miners, uh, Wally Skolonski, um, you know, Donald Boys. Clyde Smith, and we didn't really have a full forward, but we had a, a sort of a lot of those guys just floated through full forward. So it was very mobile and a very hard side to, to match up on. Um, and of course, our, our main competition at that time was uh, was Williamstown, um, and they had a, they were a side of champions. Uh, they, they just had so many AFL, actually AFL footballers playing for them, um, and they've beaten us a couple of times during the year, um, pretty pretty handsomely. Um, and then in the second semi-final, we they beat us, but they only beat us by about four or five goals. So it wasn't, you know, it gave us a bit of, I suppose, a bit of confidence that, you know, we weren't that far away from them. And uh, then come grand final day, or, which was played at Turek Park, it was just a huge game. The crowd, uh, it was, I don't know how many thousand people there, but the whole ground was full. We would have had to win ten thousand people. There. Um, they were very confident. I think they had the uh, Winstown. City band playing in the club rooms before the game, so they were extremely confident. Uh, and we um, we were we were quite confident ourselves, and uh, it, it was one of probably the best games of what football I've ever played in. Um, I can remember I played on a, a guy called uh, Buchanan, who was SNR forward, and uh, we 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 were pretty close uh, in terms of ability, and we'd had some good good uh, battles during the year. We probably broke an even. I remember in the first quarter, at some stage, I can't remember where it was, but um, we went for a mark together and uh, I turned around and he was uh, Buchanan lying flat on the ground, unconscious, basically. Uh, I had no idea what had happened, but there were Williamstown guys coming from everywhere, throwing punches, and it was, was all in. And I found out later that uh, Johnny Snell had accidentally uh, uh, ran into Buchanan and floated his forearms. And I think that set the scene, that's where it all sort of came from. and. Uh, uh, it was just uh, it was blue after blue, uh, and, I, and I think that worked in our favour because Williamstown sort of lost the lost the focus and, and started to, uh, to play the man a bit. And uh, um, we uh, our forwards, uh, Terry Mons and Robbie Adams, just uh, had a field day, and uh, 
It was uh, it was a fantastic uh, fantastic game. It was full of uh, full of action and, and full of goals scoring. Um, I remember three quarter time. I can't remember what Brushy said, but we were about a goal up, and um, I thought, and I think we all thought, when we went back to our positions, that we, were, we had a chance here, and we did, and we ended up um, winning it. And uh, just it was just most uh, incredible game of football I've ever played. And it was great coming back here because we all had the support of back here. On Sunday night, and uh, it was a great week of celebration. So, yeah, fantastic time for us all. Yeah, after uh, '68, um, we we lost uh, some of our really good players. Um, Darcy Harris, Bobby Adams uh, went down Geelong, and uh, Ronnie Kennedy, and we lost Brushy as well. So Ronnie Kennedy took over, and it's sort of something that I suppose we don't get recognised much for, but. Those, uh, those three years after 68, where we stayed up in first division playing against you know, the big boys, um, you know, playing against Danny and uh, Port Melbourne and those guys. And we were, we were still just a bunch of guys from Geelong who, were, who, who played together and, and played. And we were committed to ourselves and also to the jumper, which is something that I think in those days we did. Uh, you, you played for your mates and you played for the jumper. I'm not sure whether that's with money in football today, whether that's still the same, but that's what it was like back then. And uh, so those three years after 68 playing in the, um, in the first division were great years. Um, Ronnie Kennel will coach the first year, and then Brian coach uh, the next couple of years. And as I said, we had no stars, but uh, we were able to win the uh, required amount of games to stay up in, in the top division. And I always consider that to be a uh, a, a pretty good success story for the club that probably doesn't get mentioned a lot. So I think one of the advantages that uh, the Geelong West that we had here over the Melbourne clubs is we, we had um, the ability to, to travel together to Melbourne every second week um, to each game. And uh, I had that experience when I was at Geelong in 1995, but basically it's always the guys travelling together. When I came to West, uh, they had a policy where the, the wives and girlfriends um, could um, could come as well, and, and, and that was that was really terrific. It sort of, I suppose, it put a little bit more control on the bus trips, but it also built a, a great relationship not only between the guys but also between the girlfriends and the wives, and, and some of the guys uh, had, had their children as well that would come on the bus. So it was a real, it was a real family, um, close, strong bonding. Uh, time those bus trips and, and yeah you know, I think as I said I think that was probably the reason well that was an advantage certainly we had over the Melbourne dogs because uh, we, we got to, to spend a lot of time together on the bus um, singing and talking and laughing and, and probably sometimes commiserating uh, but most times certainly in uh, 68 uh, singing and laughing and talking which was great um, and that's what other clubs did, and I think that was what made this club so 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 great. Um, that, um, as I mentioned before, you know, there, there was no one with, with an ego in that side. Um, we're all very even. Uh, no one thought they were better than each other, and if they did, they were probably pretty much brought down anyway. So um, it was an experience that we playing here. The experience was basically of being able to develop friendships through the time that we spent together, not only on the train track or on the playing field, but also uh, on, the, on the bus trips up to, uh, up to Melbourne and back. Um, and that was a huge part of the success of this club. Um, what I take away from playing this club, as I said at the start, you know, this club gave me the opportunity to, uh, to play at the highest level that I was ever capable of playing at. Uh, I made some terrific friends and still have got those great friends uh, today uh, from playing at this club and uh, they gave me the opportunity to play on the friendship side and that's something that very few players have uh, that, uh, that uh, joy. So uh, it's been uh, it was a wonderful journey and something I'll never forget. You've given your heart to get here and your soul to get it right. You can take them, boots and all, oh, but it's sure gonna take a fight. When you spend all week getting to your peak, you're gonna have your say.
Sunday, it's gonna be a fight.